In this video, I'm going to walk you step by step how to create your own custom part in FreeCAD using this spur gear as an example, this ring gear, and then show you how to put everything in an assembly so you could create your own parts from scratch. And thank you PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Okay, so when you open up FreeCAD, what you want to do is go ahead and create a new part. You could come here under the new file and click on parametric part. So this will start your new part. Some parts you could start off by creating a sketch. If you're creating a gear, it's a little bit different. You want to come up here to part design and then choose involute gear. Once you come here, you get to choose a number of teeth. Here we're going to choose 20 and our module is going to be one. Once you do that, go ahead and click OK. So this will create a sketch of your gear. So once you do that, you could come up here. You're going to see this tab here that says model. Sometimes if you're missing that tab model, what you can do is come to view and under panels, you could make sure to click or unclick the model tab. So you can see when I click that, it's gone. And if I come back here and click model, it's back here. So. So just make sure that tab is showing because you'll need it to do some of our operations. So up here on the top, you could change the view to top and you could click on your scroll button to uh, pan your view here. And then once we do that, let's go ahead and click on Envolute gear on the left. And then you could click on the pad button here. This will create a thickness to your part. So here, if you click on your uh, mouse key and the left or right key and the scroll wheel like this, you get to rotate your part. So here, I'm going to go ahead and choose a thickness of 10. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So you can see now I created a gear with a thickness of 10. So if I have a part, like say a shaft I wanted to go through, I can make a cut here. So, so what I'm going to do right now is go ahead and create a sketch on this gear. So you want to make sure to come to the task tab on the left. Once you do that, click on the surface and click on create sketch. When you go in this mode, you can start sketching. So I'm going to click on the circle icon. I'm going to start creating a circles here. So I'm going to choose five and just hit enter. So this is going to create a five millimeter diameter hole here. Now we can go ahead and exit the sketch. I could click close here. This will end the sketch. Now to actually do the cut operation, so you can see right now it's just a 2D sketch, so nothing is extrude cut here. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this button here called pocket. So this pocket is going to allow me to cut through and you can see right now it's not cutting all the way through. So if you actually want to cut through, there's different options here. You could choose the type here. The type, what I want to do is just do through all. So this will cut all the way through. This is what I want. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So you can see right now I have a pretty nicely cut gear with a hole for my shaft to go through. So now I'm going to show you how to make another type of gear, which is going to be my ring gear. By the way, if you're new to the software side of robotics, make sure to check out my master AI and robotics bundle on my website where you get to learn ROS, OpenCV, computer vision using AI, Python, and C++. It's a great way to jumpstart your career in robotics software engineering. So go ahead and check it out on my website. It's going to be at kevinwoodrobotics.com. I'm going to leave a link in the video description, so go ahead and check it out. And make sure to check out some of my latest videos on my YouTube channel as well. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new part. I'm going to come up here to File, New, and then this will create a new part. So what I want to do is start off with a sketch of the gear again. So I'm going to come up here to Part Design and choose Involute Gear. So for this one, is the ring gear is going to be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to set this to be 60 teeth. And then the module, I'm going to set to 1. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So this will create a sketch of our teeth. So now if you want to try to create a thickness to this part, you could go ahead and click on the pad. But notice that this time I didn't create a body. So it's going to prompt you to create a body first. So this will create a body. I'm going to go ahead and click OK, cancel it. And then what you can do is you can actually drag this involute gear sketch into the body. And now this will be part of the body. So now this will allow you to actually create the pad. So if I click pad here, you should see the gear Come alive. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. So this will finalize the extrusion. Now you can see this is my gear all nicely made. But to make a ring gear, what we have to do is actually cut away this from a bigger part. So this will involve creating another sketch. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to come here to the task tab and go ahead and click on create body and then create sketch. This is going to start the sketch. So what I want to do is go ahead and click on this XY plane. Just click on this plane and it should activate it. 
it defaults to the top view, but I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it and then click on the bottom view. I'm doing this because it's gonna be a little bit easier to set some of my constraints. So once I'm here, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and draw a circle. So you can see now I can snap on to the origin. I'm gonna drag it out to make it about 70 millimeters and hit enter. Then I'm gonna go ahead and end this task here. Then I'm gonna add a padding. So this again, you can see this will create a thickness of 10. I'm gonna go ahead and click okay here. So now you can see that there's two bodies here, right? You have one body that's gonna be the gear and then the other body that's just a solid cylinder. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure you click on the right body. So the first body, this is the one with the gear. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Now that I have this selected, what you wanna do is come up here to this Boolean operation. This is what's gonna allow me to cut the body away from the cylinder. So you want to make sure you choose the cut option here. This is what's gonna allow the cut to happen. And you can see that now I've made the cut and we have the ring gear. Go ahead and click OK and this will finalize the operation. So now you can see that we have our ring gear made. Real quick, if you want to have your parts 3D printed but don't have access to a 3D printer, you want to make sure you check out PCBWay. They have a really easy system for you to get your parts printed. Just come up here to 3D printing. And once you come here, just drag in your part and choose the quantity material, color, different threading options, and choose a final product description. Then go ahead and submit your part for review and it should be ready to go. So next step, what I want to do is create an extrusion on the bottom and then create a shaft for my spur gear. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I'm in the sketcher tab here. Once I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this plane. And then what I want to do is create a sketch. It's gonna say plane face. I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. So this is gonna start the sketch on the bottom plane. And what I wanna do is you actually have to create external geometries in FreeCAD, unlike SOLIDWORKS. So what you wanna do is come up here to this blue icon and then you wanna click on the outer edge of the circle. So later on, we're gonna use this as a reference. So I'm gonna go ahead and now create the circle sketch by clicking on the circle icon. So I'm gonna start the sketch here and then you can see that now it kind of snaps on when I let go. And you can see if I try dragging it out, what you want to do is actually click on the two circles. You're going to see on the left here is the two are highlighted and then click on this equal constraints. So this will make it coincident with that circle. So now that we have that, we could actually create a thickness to it. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And then if you come here to the body, this is actually a separate sketch now. So you actually want to create a body first. So I'm going to come here to uh, part design and then I want to create a body. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag that sketch into my body here. So now that that sketch is in there, what I can do is extrude boss it. So I'm gonna click on the ex extrude button or the pad button here. Okay, so you can see that now I have the part extruded. Right now it's set at 10. Uh, I'm just gonna make it a little bit thinner here. So I'm gonna set it to five. So you can see it finished extruding. So now I want to create a shaft for my part. So I'm gonna come here to Sketcher and I'm gonna create a sketch. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this plane here and then create sketch uh, plane face. So it's gonna be on this face here. So I'm gonna come here to the circle tool and I'm gonna create my shaft here. So I'm gonna click here and then I'm gonna set this to be five and hit enter. So it's gonna be floating right now. You can see it's not exactly constrained this way. It's vertically constrained, so I can't drag it right or left. So I'm gonna dimension this. So you can see there's a couple of tools here. I'm gonna go ahead and if you hover over it, you get to see what they are. So this one right here is a dimension tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the center and this will by default uh, show me this. I'm gonna go ahead and click 20. So this is where I want it. And I'm gonna go ahead and exit the sketch. You can see right here, it's a separate sketch. So you could go ahead and come here to part design and then you could create a body here. You could go ahead and drag that sketch into the body. And then what you can do is you could extrude boss this or pad it. I'm gonna go ahead and pad it by the same thickness of my gear, which was 10 millimeters. You can see that there's a slight lag here, but once I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. You can see that it's gonna take a bit. And then now you can see that I've added the shaft here, which I will put my gear in just a little bit.
So before that, what I want to do is go ahead and create a circular pattern in FreeCAD. They call it polar pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the shaft here and then click on the polar pattern here. So this will prompt me to choose how many times I want to pattern it circularly. So right here by default, it chooses two for the number of times. I'm just going to bump it up to three because I want to have three for three spur gears. Now go ahead and hit OK and it should finish extruding the three like you see right now. Okay, so now we're ready for our assembly. What we want to do is come up here and click on File New. So this will create a new file. Then you want to make sure you're in the Assembly tab here. So I'm going to click on Assembly. And then you're going to see this button here on the upper left that says Create Assembly. Go ahead and click on that. So this will prompt you to start your assembly and you want to bring some parts in. So you're going to see this icon here that says Insert Components. You're going to go ahead and choose the component you want to insert into your assembly. So before you can assemble the parts, make sure you already saved your file here. I'm just calling it assembly. So now I can go ahead and click on the part I want to insert. So I'm going to click on the last body that was affected for my ring gear, which is body four. It's going to prompt me to ask if I want to set a ground. I'm just going to click yes, because you need a fixed part here. And then the second part, what I want to insert is a spur gear. I'm going to go ahead and click on the body of that. So you can see I inserted one. If I click another one, it's going to have a second one. And if I click one more time, it's going to have three. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So these three parts you can see are floating and I need to mate them into the three parts that I have here. So before that, I want to change the color of these gears so that when they're on top of each other, it's easier to see. So what we want to do is go ahead and right click. I'm going to right click on the polar pattern here and click on appearance. This is going to change the color for the inner ring gear. So you could choose the ambient color, maybe this bright blue here. You're going to need to change it for some of these other options here because of the lighting is going to take effect of that. So I'll just change it for these three here and then go ahead and click OK and then close it out. You can see that now my gear color has updated. You could do the same for the smaller gears here. So go ahead and click on the pocket, right click, and then appearance. You could go ahead and choose custom appearance, and then you could choose a color. For those, I'm going to choose maybe something nice and bright like this orange here. Go ahead and click OK. Do the same for the other ones. Click OK and one more for this one. You could play around with the actual shade if you want to have a nicer effect, but I'm just going to go ahead and make them orange. So now I can see that we have our color gears here for better visibility. So I'm going to go ahead and start assembly now. Okay, so now to mate them together, what we want to do is go ahead and click up here. You can see that we have different type of joints here. The one we'll be using will be this one here. So if you hover over it, you'll see that this one is Revolute. This one is a cylindrical joint. We're going to use a cylindrical joint. So go ahead and click on center of your spur gear and then the shaft here. So this will make it uh, concentric. And you can see that it's it could spin freely here. Now I'll just do the same for the other two. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the center of that and the shaft and then click OK and create another one. So go ahead and click on the center and the shaft and then click OK. So you can see now we have the three mates here. But one thing you're going to notice is that uh, the height of this is not fixed, right? So we want to go ahead and constrain that so it's actually going to be on the right surface level. So to do that, you want to come up here. This is going to be this icon here with the arrow between two planes, create distance joint. Go ahead and click on that. Then you want to choose the surface of the gear and then the surface of the bigger gear. So you can see that now the two surfaces are constrained. And you want to do the same thing for the other two gears. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that uh, distance joint here and then click on the surface of one and then the surface of the other. Click OK. And then you want to repeat the process and do that for the other joint. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and hit OK. So now you can see that after I do that, all the gears are nicely constrained like the way I want it. So this is pretty much all you need. So hopefully this gave you a good idea on how to create parts and make assemblies out of your parts. So if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.